Here we go. I can't, you know, what we're underreacting to is the preciousness of football. Are we in week 15? It's unbelievable. I'm sad. I'm very sad. I love I love me some NFL, and it's so precious these weeks, and FanDuel's really highlighted that all season long. So let's buckle down and, and do this thing, guys. Uh, I want to start with what is going on in Denver, okay? In Denver, at SoFi on Sunday, all over the place, because when I talk about a turnaround, and I was – me and Taylor Luan could argue about this all the, all day long. I knew Sean Payton was going to turn this thing around, and it started. I still was like, and I still am like, Russell Wilson, can we get like a nice like moment from you, a nice game? Could we put something together? Um, and it has been day and night since that one and five start. We've highlighted that. We've been all over it. I feel like they're still not playing. Um, playing into the like narrative of the AFC. Nobody's really taking them seriously in the playoff picture, despite being part of that six-way tie. They're in this thing, and they're sitting just a game back of Kansas City for the AFC West lead. And yes, they may not be winning in the flashiest of ways, and people may like say whatever they want to say about their quarterback and whatever, but there's so much substance to the way they're getting things done right now, and there's also so much like oomph to it, okay, or whatever you want to call that. Six and one record of last seven, tied with the Ravens and Cowboys for the best in the NFL, and it's really been all about the defense. They're allowing the second fewest points per game, leading the league with 18 takeaways to seven giveaways. This is the team that gave up 70 to the Dolphins, people, and they have the third best, no, the, the third, no, sorry, the best third down defense in the league as well. That matters. That's a sexy stat. If you have the best third down defense, that's just like a whatever that is, like like uh, thing, okay? And well, we're using all of the Sean Stilato <laughs> things today. The offense is playing, I won't say mf -er, but I'll symbolize and do, I'll, I'll DK Metcalf it, and I'll learn how to say it with my hands. Okay, um, they're playing, you know, complimentary, uh, complimentary football, which I'm sure Howie Long is going to be all over in just a few minutes. But they've been second run percentage. They've been protecting the ball. They're controlling the clock. And while none of this stuff creates the most electrifying brand of football, it creates wins and results. And the coolest part is that it's not really like the marquee guys who have been the keys to all of this. Let's dig into it. This is under underreacting to the greatness of guys and performances like Alex Singleton. He's a linebacker, okay? He's the linebacker who the Eagles didn't want anymore. He comes to Denver on a bargain. And he led the entire NFL with 81 tackles over the last seven weeks. It's guys like Jaquan McMillan, who went undrafted last year out of East Carolina, forced six turnovers during that stretch. That doesn't even include this one. Oh my gosh, from Sunday. That, by the way, I think was Hamilton unfairly taken away from him. I mean, what a freaking play. That should have held up. That was a fumble. I'm, I'm standing by that one. I'm dying on that hill. You're dying on that hill. All right, I like that. <laughs> and guys like 2021 seventh round pick Jonathan Cooper, who was second on the team in sacks and even had an interception on Sunday. Okay, I'm eating my ice cream. My chocolate ice cream, I had Oreos, I had like, I mean, I had coffee with Kahlua and Bailey's for four straight quarters. I was living my best life at SoFi. And so were these guys, some of the lesser known names, the unheralded gentlemen who are really stepping up to keep this team in contention. In fact, it's the flashier names that sort of bounced when this turnaround really started. Now, there's something really special going on in Denver right now. Culturally, top to bottom, and credit to all these players, and Vance Joseph especially, Sean Payton, of course, that whole staff are squeezing every ounce of potential out of this group. It has been so impressive to watch everybody except for that special teams coach who was just... <laughs> we're not name? getting into that. There was a, there was a coach, <laughs> and we were standing on the, on the field, and he was just... He was circling. I don't know what he was doing, but I was like, hey, focus. We got a game here. Um, I, we, we were there. It was awesome to watch Sean Payton go give everybody the handshake. He does it for every game. It's a thing he did back to, uh, in, in his Saints days as well. So big game, big wins, and let them keep coming. Now, here's what I will tell you. While, I was, while we were at the game, I, thought, I figured I'd catch up with my friend Hamilton. And I figured we'd talk about... You know, how's your family? You're newly married. What's going on? What are the plans for the holidays? And every three seconds, he just kept being like, I just love Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> oh, and co the game was, uh, we, we just kept seeing him make play after play during you, that Niner Seahawks Every game. other word out of your and I was like, enough already <laughs> about Brandon Ayuk, but we got to get to him. We're going to give him some love just for you right now. Yes, we have Devo on our show every week. We love him. He's got a million touchdowns in two weeks. CMC, amazing. MVP, Kittle. Kittle, who's not been on our show? 
What? Trent Williams, uh, who we're trying to get on our show, Bosa, who ditched our show, um, and Fred <laughs> Warner, who's too busy getting a fight to be on our show. There's no <laughs> so shortage of stars on the Niners to talk about. And I feel like all those guys being so good week in, week out has made us underreact to what Hamilton was in my ear, Brandon Ayuking for four quarters at a game that Brandon Ayuk was not playing in. This past Sunday was a perfect example. Debo has 150 yards and two scores. McCaffrey, over 150, he's averaging at 1.13 yards per carry. Yeah. He ended up averaging nine yards a carry, which is absurd and ridiculous. Kill with a long touchdown. You know, Warner, all these things are happening. Trent blocking, getting in fights, blah, blah, blah. Basically, became a footnote that Ayuk ended up with six catches for 126 yards. Brandon has been putting up monster numbers all year long, and it's time to give him some love. Four games to go, guys. He already set a career high, 1,053 receiving yards. He ranks sixth in the league, averaging 87.8 yards per game. He's leading the league at almost 19 yards per catch, and he's added six touchdowns as well. He's got chemistry with Purdy. They all do, but it's really been off the charts because it is top tier. And if you watch, I mean, this is number one wide receiver stuff he's doing this season. And I feel like if this were any other team, this would be this would be the, the, the this would be the conversation. It would be th what a superstar, ascending superstar status this year. It's not probably it's a good thing because he's gonna get one of these, which will probably be nice. By the way, I got my nails done. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, regardless, and guys don't care about nails. <laughs> It's funny. Have you ever seen those memes or those like TikToks that are like what what guy, what guys what guys want you to say when you show them their nails? Never mind. And regardless, cut that there. Um, regardless, uh, Brandon Ayuk, his ascension, okay, this season just makes this team all the more dangerous. And whether it's San Francisco or somewhere else, I promise you this: he's gonna get paid like a number one guy because he's gonna finish um, his fifth year option next season no next year so he's gonna get paid like that and Hamilton because you're so obsessed with this guy and you would not stop and it was though I love him annoying <laughs> what do you want to deep dive about Brandon you teach us something because the, pr the production that you mentioned is is so incredible but yeah. what like what really gets me excited and you know as somebody who coaches is to see the little things he does that he doesn't have to do for a guy that puts up these numbers. And I want you to watch him up at the top of the screen here. Here's the Christian McCaffrey run we all saw at the beginning of the game, that 72 yard run. Look at the effort, the blocking downfield on Devin Witherspoon. He is sprinting 80 yards downfield. Look at him, to see get you. Devin Witherspoon okay. out of the way and give Christian McCaffrey a chance to break her on and potentially get in the end zone. And you talked about it with Debo, the buy in from all of the other skill players, they don't care who has the ball. They are giving maximum effort to try to spring their teammates for big plays. And that's such a special thing and something that you really don't see on that level consistently in the NFL. And even Brandon was asked this week, what's it like playing with Debo? Because Debo had this another monster game. And Ayuk's probably like, he could be like, <laughs> I had 126 yards. I had a great game. Yeah. But he was asked because Debo had the flashy plays, that long touchdown, like all of that. And he just, you know, they, they all speak so highly of each other. But I felt like that from, D I felt that from Debo week one. Yeah. We had Debo on and I was asking about his teammates and he's ne like, Debo has never taken the bait of like, I want the ball more. And I know that they had whatever happened with him and Shanahan and like the, whatever happened, like not over a season ago, like none of that exists. And I, who deserves more, like speaking of underreaction, who deserves the most credit for that? Is it Kyle? I think you got to give Shanahan a lot of credit. He sets the expectation. All those guys, uh, no matter who they bring in, it seems like they get everybody to buy into that. But I, it, it can also be a credit to John Lynch because they're finding player, they're scouting for character, and they're finding guys that have that type of buy-in that are going to put in that extra effort and that fit into what they're trying to do and the culture they're trying to build there. It's not easy to do. It's no. not easy. <laughs> I can no. make a joke. I'm not going to. We're going to move on <laughs> to uh, my other thing that we're underreacting about, guys. Howie Long on the show. We're underreacting to that. Do you have questions for him? We're going to do questions with Shams. Um, so if you have any questions to ask Shams, help me out. Do my homework for me when it comes to the NBA and such and hit us up uh, in the YouTube chat and we appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, Mark saying it's a pr impressive to see, what did he say, the Niners uh, players all doing their role because 
that many talents usually go flat from inconsistency or just like cause drama because they're not getting the ball in big spots like happened in other AFC teams with lots of receivers. Okay, um, finally, we're going to go to the Bengals and we're going to talk about defensive end Trey Hendrickson, okay? Do you know that two years ago I was the queen of the jungle? I'm seeing a lot of tweets on the old timeline today. That was two years ago. What? When I was drunk with uh, off Bengal bombs uh, with D Bengals gym. Listen, <laughs> we have to talk about him because when you hear the talking heads ar <laughs> arguing about top pass rushers in the league, it's always Miles Garrett, it's TJ Watt, well-deserved, Micah Parsons, sure, Nick Bosa, great. And for some reason, you never hear the name Trey Hendrickson. What's that about? Forget about it, okay? We're underreacting to not only what he's doing this year, what he's kind of done in his course of the last four seasons, going back to his time with Sean Payton in New Orleans. As for this season, he's racked up two sacks this past weekend. That doesn't include his hit on Minshew that led to B.J. Hill's diving interception. What do you think of this, Hanny? Uh, this was this was a peak Trey Hendrickson performance. This play was unbelievable. <laughs> How he gets in there, hits Minshew's arm, and then B.J. Hill comes up with that diving pick. He's it, so dominant and a maniac, and his performance pushed him up to 13 and a half sacks on the year. Like, how many NFL fans would know that? Like, come on, that's good for third in the NFL, people. That's legit. That's more than Miles Garrett. That's more than Micah Parsons have. Um, and, and he's one full sack away from setting a new career high, by the way. And the consistency has been really wild because you got to think, like, has he ever come close to that? He has, guys. He's had at least a half sack in 11 of Cincy's 13 games this year. And then over the past four seasons, it becomes, like, impossible to understand why he's never been so much as a second-team All-Pro. He's never been a second-team All-Pro. He ranks fourth in the NFL with 49 sacks since 2020. That's an average of over 12 sacks a season over that span. You see where that ranks in relation to your boy Bosa there. I also want to point this out. That's eight more than Max Crosby's had, 11 more than Khalil Mack, 12 more than Donald, 19 more than Josh Allen, 22 more than Joey Bosa, and a partridge in a pear tree. Like what? Five golden rings, that's crazy. It's not just a production. Like when I say maniac, this is, this is a menace there on the field, people. Uh, and it seems like he really sets the tone for the defense. Coach Lou, defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo on the show just over a week ago, and I had to ask about Trey. You had a bunch of maniacs on your team. DJ, I mean, Trey Hendrickson is ridiculous. Yeah, Trey, <laughs> Trey, is, Trey is something, man. I'm, I'm uh, so happy that he is a part of our team. Uh, when he crosses that line on Sunday, <laughs> he flips the switch and he's a different human. Uh, he's, he's built the rush quarterbacks and he was born to do that for sure. What do you think he wanted to say there? <laughs> do you think he wanted to drop a little MF? Oh yeah. A little <laughs> joker? Yep. Seriously, though, he's a maniac. You've yeah. loved him for a long time. I can't believe the Saints, and you you were t uh, a lot made of the Saints 2017 Ram check, um, uh, Trey Hendrickson. Who else did they have in that draft class? They weren't able to keep Kamara. him. But he was such a stud for the Saints, too. Saints fans yeah. know. Saints fans know. And that was, yeah, I mean, I remember I was talking about him, that 2020 season with the Saints, and I, I remember the game against the Everyone Chiefs. Everyone thought it was an anomaly, though, that year. Yeah, and he's tossing Mahomes around, he's getting into fights with all the offensive linemen, <laughs> you know, maniac is the perfect word for him. He's glad that he's on the <laughs> Bengals squad, and they've got a big, I mean, this Vikings, I don't know how that, that, that game will go. No Dobbs. Nick, Nick Mullins. Nick Mullins? <laughs> Question mark? I don't know. They're going to win. They're going to win, and Mr. Browning's going to keep it going. Dick Browning, come on the show. We're trying to get you on the show. Let's do it. Okay. Um, they're in the thick of the playoff race. Couldn't be more excited for them, even without number nine, which is, like, such a... Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe right here. Do it now for the latest from Up and Adam.